MCCLA. Welcome to the live broadcast of Metropolitan Community Church, Los Angeles. We wait for our God. We strive to restore balance with creation, reminding ourselves of God's call upon us to be good stewards of the earth. We wait for our God. We work in the ways of justice to bring up the lowly and restore the poor. We wait for our God. We reach out to those in need, reminded we are sisters and brothers in Christ. We wait for our God. We pray for wisdom and guidance to live in the ways of Christ and to remember God's call on our lives. We wait for our God while we participate in the reign of God here on earth through our work for social justice, our stewardship of the earth, and love of our neighbors. We trust and hope in God in this time of worship. Let's rise now in body and spirit as we begin our worship together. Power. 
Indeed, this is the day that our God has made, calls us to rejoice and to be glad in it, to share fellowship and love with one another, as God has indeed first loved us. And so in that name of God, in the name of the Son, and of the name of the Holy Spirit, we gather in this place this day to worship and to show our dedication to the one who loved us first. May God be honored through our worship this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It, it really is a joy to welcome you to worship on the close of this beautiful Saturday here in Los Angeles. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Pride here in LA, and as a congregation, as always, we will be marching in the Pride Parade, why is we are having worship this evening rather than tomorrow. Uh, but we are delighted that you have come out, you have expressed your pride, and you've come to experience the fellowship of God in this place this day, and so we welcome one another in the name of all that is holy. We want to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time today. Uh, we know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are delighted that you're present with us. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your heart, a hand gently for a moment so that we can see you, uh, so that we can welcome you to worship this day. Welcome to you. Our ushers will get to you, but please do accept this brochure and a flyer as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us this day. Uh, inside the flyer, you'll find more information about our church. You'll also find a welcome card that's designed specifically for you today. Uh, later on in the service, we do receive an offering, and we invite you to place those welcome cards into the, welcome, into the offering plates. Uh, those cards will come directly to me. They do ask for some personal information. Uh, my name is Reverend Dr. Neil Thomas. I'm the senior pastor of our congregation, but along with every single person who surrounds you in this church this day, we truly believe in the priesthood of all believers in this congregation, and that each and every one of us is called with our names and with a purpose, and that not one of us is unworthy of the name of Jesus in our lives. And so we welcome you amongst this congregation this day. Our ushers have also passed out the welcome tablet, so please do take a moment to sign in for us. Uh, let us know that you've been present with us. Also, let us know if there is any way in which we can minister effectively to you and for you. Um, that is a, an important way in which we are able to communicate with one another. Uh, if you would like uh, a member of the staff to call you, please do check the box so that we can follow up with you. Uh, but also, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, if we do not want you to leave without knowing that you are loved and that you are cared for. So please feel free to see any one of us that served on the dais uh, today, and we'll be delighted to spend a few moments with you directly after worship today. Over the last few weeks, not only have we been busy getting the sanctuary ready for uh, our move from our Franklin campus to here, uh, our Prospect campus, uh, but a number of volunteers have also been extremely busy uh, getting us ready for the Pride Festival. And uh, tomorrow, um, more than half a million folks will be in the city of West Hollywood uh, to witness um, the Pride Festival. And why do we march in Pride? Well, we march in Pride because we still know that there are people in our world uh, in our community who do not know the good news that God loves each and every one of us just as we are and just as we are made. And so we march in the Pride Festival to allow people to know that they too can experience spiritual life just as we have already been blessed with. And that together as one community, one world, one people, whether we identify as LGBTQ, AI, whatever letter of the alphabet uh, we identify as, uh, we are all together and together we are much, much stronger stronger. And so we dedicate uh, our time at Pride to reaching out with that good news, that message of God's love. And our theme for this year is global faith and global pride, uh, because we realize that as the founding church of this denomination, our message from the very early roots of this congregation has become a global phenomenon of reaching out beyond just the walls of Los Angeles to all the corners of the world. And so we acknowledge that we are involved in a global faith and global pride, reaching out with a message of our social action, meeting the needs of those around immigration, meeting the needs around those who are homeless, who are naked, who are imprisoned, reaching the needs of those that our faith calls us to make a difference within. And so with the flags and with our banner and with the clergy and the staff of the church and with every single one of you, we sincerely hope that you will walk with us tomorrow along Santa Monica Boulevard and to express our global faith 
and our global pride. And what a wonderful way to celebrate with all of these flags from places around the world. Let's give our show a sense of appreciation. We are so thankful to each and every one of you. We're going to allow our flags to process out of the sanctuary now, and we're just going to uh, hoot and holler and say thank you to all of the countries from around the world that make up our world. Thank you so very, very much. So tomorrow is Pride Sunday and we'll be gathering at 10.15 for our interfaith worship service. That will be on the corner of La Cienega and Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, It's directly outside the uh, CVS um, pharmacy that's right there on the corner. And you're invited to come and share with uh, uh, Christian friends and Muslim friends, uh, Jewish friends and of course Christian friends and people of no faith. Um, who just want to be a living witness. And so we'll be there tomorrow at 10.15. Reverend Dr. Pat Langlois, is the president of the Interfaith Clergy Council, and uh, she has coordinated the service for many years and does a great job. Let's show our appreciation to Reverend Dr. Pat this morning. And then at 10.30, we are invited to join our contingent um, on Crescent Heights at 10.30. Uh, We're inviting you to wear white uh, or green shirts or an outfit of your origin. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but it will be very creative, I'm sure. Um, So we are going to invite you to, uh, to march with us tomorrow. Last week, we began a a drive within our congregation called the Pride to Thrive Drive. Uh, We reminded ourselves, even as we stepped into this new sanctuary, that this congregation is dedicated to social justice. And so uh, we stepped into this new sanctuary and we launched this new drive uh, last Sunday. Uh, Simon Costello is here from um, the uh, Lesbian and Gay Youth Center, the Jeff Griffiths Center. And between ourselves and Congregation Kolomi, uh, which is our Jewish congregation just a few miles away from us, um, and also with the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles, uh, we are beginning to collect um, clothes and uh, toiletries and offer our time and talent to mentor uh, young folks. Um, who are uh, in Los Angeles and who are either on the streets or homeless who have been kicked out because they have self-identified as LGBT um, and are now at the Jeff Griffith Center. Uh, We are reaching out in ways in which we can make a difference. So we're going to invite you over the next few weeks, in fact throughout the whole of June, uh, to bring donations to help them prepare for interviews, uh, for jobs and internships. Uh, Perhaps you're able to uh, craft um, uh, CVs or resumes and you want to offer for that skill to help a young person and their resume get to the top of the list, uh, tutors for a GED education and mentors. So we're going to invite you to do that over the next month and if you're interested in that work, would you please see Tori Topian, um, who will be delighted to uh, take your name and to also follow up with you and to put you in touch with the right people. The tribe are celebrating their pride every Friday night uh, during this month in the Gandhi Room. Uh, The Gandhi Room is at at the rear of the building and they will be there every Friday celebrating their pride uh, on Friday evenings. The tribe is our young adults group uh, for folks uh, 30 years and younger um, and they'll be gathering, gathering every Friday evening. The California men's gatherings are using our sanctuary uh, next weekend here, uh, Friday and Saturday evenings for a CMG short film festival. Uh, There'll be a large screen in the sanctuary. Um, As you know, uh, in the second phase of our renovations, there is a complete theater uh, underneath the sanctuary, and that will be for screenings. Uh, But in the short term, while we're still renovating the lower level, um, we will be using the sanctuary for those screenings. So the California men's gathering will be here next weekend, Friday and Saturday evening evening is at 8 o'clock and you're invited to come along and to see the screenings that they are producing. Uh, You can check out more information on their website, uh, thecmg.org forward slash film, and uh, that will give you more information uh, about the men's gatherings and their um, short film festival. Also, uh, coming up very soon, in the next week or so, uh, we will be having activists here from Uganda. Um, As many of you know, um, homosexuality in Uganda um, is still punishable by death. 
Um, and we have activists who will be here next week. Uh, they have produced a, uh, a film uh, which will be screening uh, during the Outfest Festival, uh, but it's also going to be screening uh, with the directors over the next weekend. Uh, we have just a short clip from that film this, morning, this, this, uh, this afternoon, I should say. I keep thinking it's morning. Um, it's very, uh, very different for us to be gathering at five in the afternoon, um, but uh, we're going to just show you a quick trailer uh, for that film, and then you can check out more information at their website. So we'll just pay our attention to the screens, and I know that I'll... Uh, there's a way you feel when you know you're unwanted. That's how I feel. I have to pretend to be what I'm not. Do you like feel? If I'm with you, then I feel as if you're supposed to be my wife. There's no longer a debate in Uganda. We don't recognize homosexuality as a human right here. The anti-homosexuality bill, which was tabled in Parliament, proposes life in prison for gay activity and death for aggravated homosexuality. Homosexuals, they eat each other's rectum. They eat their food. Americans and Europeans. They want us to eat their poison of homosexuality. We're saying no. I received a letter from the exhibition. This is do launch let's uh, show our appreciation for this work And so we are invited not only to a panel discussion with the directors, um, but also with folks who are traveling here from Uganda uh, to help us understand what's going on in that country. Global faith and global pride. It's not just about what happens here in Los Angeles or in this country, but what happens around the world. And uh, talking of which, some of you may have seen Facebook today. One uh, uh, right-wing pastor um, has p uh, hung an effigy of President Obama in the front of his church for this Sunday uh, to declare that God is displeased that he has endorsed same gender marriage. I'm so sad that not only do we know that this happens around the world, but it still happens in our own country. There is still much work for us to do, sisters and brothers, as the open, radically inclusive church that we are. We are so glad to have members in our congregation from um, Vox Femina and uh, on June 16th at 8 o'clock at the Zipper Concert Hall, uh, Vox will be performing and then on June 17th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they'll also be performing at Congregation Colomy. Uh, that event is free but you must RSVP and you can see Carol Schiffenberg today, she's the good looking woman towards the back of the room um, and she will be in the courtyard after worship uh, to give you more information about that. And we're also delighted to have members of the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles who are also members of our congregation and their concert is coming up on June 23rd and June 24th, um, uh, one at 8 o'clock and the other at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's the Gay Men's Chorus Does Country, the first time that they have done a country concert um, and uh, their uh, guest this year is Leanne Rhymes. Um, she will be singing with the Gay Men's Chorus uh, of Los Angeles and so Kerry and I will be delighted to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to uh, not only to be with her, but um, I'm sure her boyfriend's going to be coming as well. Fade to blue. God is so good. And all the time. Global faith and global pride. Let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace and welcome. We're in the right place this afternoon. God bless you. Hello, brothers and sisters. How are you this afternoon? Very well. Today's sacred reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. We are not keeping this quiet. No, not on your life. 
just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it, so I said it. We say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up Jesus will just as surely and certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without God's unfolding grace. These are hard times. These hard times are but small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, but they are gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen. to say it's um, all pretty amazing. Um, We've brought our three congregations together this afternoon, and of course, not all of us are here, but um, we have attempted to blend our worship between the nine o'clock, which is our uh, more liturgical service, which is why we started with a call to worship, and um, you know the nine o'clockers because they stood for the reading this this afternoon, um, uh, which of course doesn't happen for the 11 o'clockers. The 11 o'clockers sit for the reading, so it was really interesting just looking out and seeing where things were. Um, 
Yeah. It was like, Stan, sit, who's going to do what? Um, and then, of course, uh, singing in Spanish. Uh, we have our 130 congregation. That is our Spanish-speaking congregation. And, uh, you know, it's just wonderful. Every a couple of times a year, we get that opportunity to bring our congregations together. And, uh, of course, we know that we have also have uh, regularly at the 11 o'clock service our uh, ASL for uh, interpretation for those who are deaf and hard of hearing. And then, of course, on uh, the first and th uh, second and fourth Tuesdays of every month, of course, we have our 4G, which is our Bible study in Tagalog, and it's just great to have our <laughs> Filipinos with us today. And then, of course, every Sunday we speak in tongues when you have not only American English but British English being spoken <laughs> from the pulpit. So, um, you know, we really are an eclectic and diverse group. Um, and, of course, now moving to this campus, I have to say last Sunday after as we were uh, worshipping at our 1.30 congregation, it was just so interesting to hear um, the, our Spanish congregation speaking in here and, of course, our uh, Russian evangelical church meeting in the chapel. Um, and so it really was very confusing. I knew I was not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Um, the, the world has certainly changed and has certainly moved on. But what a wonderful way. Global faith and global pride. So proud of what God has done and continues to do amongst us. So as we respond to God in prayer, let's come and ask God to bless this word this afternoon. God, we are so thankful for this day. It is the day that you have made. You've called us to rejoice and to be glad in it. And we can rejoice and to be glad in it regardless of the circumstances of our own lives because you are present. You are with us. And your being with us enables us to share in community and to be blessed one with the other. And so we ask God that as we come into this house of worship, as we have sung, as we have heard your word, as we have responded, as we have laughed, and as we have brought to mind the various needs of our world, we now pause for this moment just for you to speak to us in that still small voice. Perhaps it will be through this sermon. Perhaps it will be through a reading. Perhaps it will be through the music. Perhaps it will be through the gentle touch of the neighbor who sat next to us. However it is, God, we know that you will meet our needs because the Spirit is present. And it is in that Spirit that we open ourselves now to your presence, to your word, inviting that word not only to touch us and to heal us and to respond to us, but helping us to open ourselves more and more to who you are. For it is in following you that we come to know you. So help us now to open ourselves, mind, body, and spirit, to that wonder of you. And now, God, I invite you to touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, in whom we pray and have our being. Amen. Amen. So our scripture reading came from the second book of Corinthians. Now, I have to say, for those of us who have read the Bible, it's almost difficult to get past the first book of Corinthians. <laughs> You know, if you can get past the first book of Corinthians and get into the second book of Corinthians, you'll actually be a little more relieved. The first book of Corinthians, it seems like God or the, the apostle is reminding the, the, the Corinthian people just how bad they are. Um, it seems over and over again rebuking them for their behavior and for challenging them to, uh, to be different. And by the time we get to 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul is obviously much, much happier with this folk that we call the Corinthians. Um, and there's much, much more levity to what Paul is, is talking about. And he's uh, seen some change in their lives. He's seen some transformation in their lives. Uh, not really unlike us. Let's be honest, most of us, we know that we sometimes need to be cautioned about who we are and what we are and how we're behaving. And then when we, you know, we finally make that transformation, we believe it's because of the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. But when we make that transformation, it's only right that we should get some reward for that good behavior. Uh, some of us like good reward for bad behavior, but, but reward for good behavior is always a good thing, you know? And it seems like Paul is giving some rewards and uh, Paul is also very conscious about the way in which these lives have been transformed and how not only are their lives being transformed, but their lives are now touching the neighboring places, the neighboring community. They're seeing that this transformation is taking place in the life of the city, in the life of the faith, in the life of the people. They're realizing that what happens in their city, in their town, is also having a great impact around the world, global faith and global pride. They're knowing that this transformation is making a difference in their lives and in their world. 
And the Apostle Paul says to them, there is nothing that they can keep silent about, about this transformation in our lives. And I don't know about you, but when we see transformation going on, not only in our own lives, but in the lives of others, it's hard to keep silent about the good news that we have been given. It's hard to keep silent about the way in which God continues to manifest God's self, not only through our lives, but through our church and through our community and through our world. There really is this uh, real promise that God gives to us. That in our transformation, even our bodies can't keep silent. There seems to be not just the transformation on the inside, but there seems to be a transformation on the outside. It's almost like our whole lives light up in different ways. And people see that light happening within us. How many times have you been in rooms with people and they've gravitated towards you? They've gravitated towards you because they see that there's something different about you than there is about maybe other people in the room. Now, it may be that you're better looking or you've got a cute, you know, maybe all of those things, but, but I like to believe it's because the Holy Spirit is being manifest in our bodies. I believe that there is this fragrance, this light of Christ that continues to illuminate from us that makes a difference. It sets us aside. It, it doesn't make us better than anybody else, uh, but it certainly sets us aside from the ordinary things of life. And that's one of the great things that I believe was happening for those early Christians. And I believe it continues to happen for each and every one of us as we allow our lives to be changed. Paul says, in the twinkling of an eye, that our lives get changed, our lives get transformed.